Okay, so we are going to be doing another tutorial on After Effects, and it is going to be on exporting. All right, or exporting in After Effects. So let's jump on into it. Now, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and show you guys the easy way to export, and then I'm going to explain all the nuances of exporting and everything like that. So the fast and simple way of exporting from After Effects, uh, as you can see, here I have my animation, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so now I just want to export that area. And first what we have to do is we have to set our work area, which is this little guy right here. Okay, as you can see it says work area end. And this we can even set with our hotkeys because mine only goes to about three seconds. So I can just go right to three seconds there. And our hotkeys are B and N to uh, set our work area. Again, B and the letter N, which are right next to each other in the keyboard. So that is how we can set our work area. Okay, so once I've set my work area, all I simply have to do is go to Composition and Make Movie, or Apple M, as you can see is the hotkey. That's going to throw it in my render queue there. And mainly, sometimes you'll get a pop-up that looks exactly like this, that is asking where you want it to save. Um, if you don't see that, you can simply just hit right on Output to, and then you can save it as whatever you want, like Curtis Logo or whatever you desire, hit save, and then, um, I'm sorry, I already have one on there, I'll probably call it Curtis Logo 2, and then we'll go ahead and have that on there, and by default, all our regular settings are okay, unless we want to change specific things, which I'll be getting into later, but once this is all done, we just simply hit render, and that's it. Okay, so now we're actually going to explore some of the other nuances and stuff like that of uh, After Effects. So uh, we already kind of took a look at the output two down there and if I was to click on this again you can simply tell to save wherever on the desktop on your documents folder and label it whatever you'd like. Uh, after that one you do have the render settings and in this one to be honest I don't play with much of the render settings at all. Uh, in fact of all the times I've exported I don't think I've really adjusted many of these really at all. Um, you do can adjust the quality if you'd like. Uh, you can also adjust the frame rate if you'd like also but like I said I don't really touch many of the options in here. Uh, the main one that I check out all the options is in my output module down here where I'll click on the uh, the words in order to pull up uh, the you know, the different areas that I can now change them to. So I'm going to click directly on the word lossless there, and it's going to pull up all my format options that I can choose here. Uh, now, obviously, right at the very top, I have a format that I can change it to either QuickTime Movie, um, a pick sequence. Um, sometimes I'll even change these to a, a Photoshop sequence or a JPEG sequence um, and be able to change that in there. But mainly if you want to change your format options, which a QuickTime Movie is compatible with a PC and a Mac, I will go into my format options over here, where then I can change it. Let's say, for instance, the default is an animation uh, compression, which is a very high compression, which we want to leave that at. But just a little sidebar, if you try to play this off of your computer, for instance, I'll hide these real fast, and I'll show you something that I exported here uh, that was an animation compression. I think this was and you might notice that it might start to play a little choppy so let's see if this one actually does that see and now it's starting to play a little choppy because the compression of that animation file is so high resolution that uh, your computer has, has trouble playing it in real time from the QuickTime player and you will notice if I was to uh, open up Final Cut Pro and uh, import that on in there just by dragging and dropping boop, boop. And uh, if I was to throw this into the timeline of my sequence here and uh, render it on out, uh, you will notice that it will play perfectly fine uh, once I render it. Okay, uh, but taking a look back in After Effects, um, the animation compression, like I said, by default is what you want to leave it at. Uh, then if you wanted to uh, just have a quick view of the video, majority of the time I export it as an MPEG-4, and then I can easily view that and uh, make adjustments that I want to, uh, because then I'll be able to play easily on your computer. But by default, I usually leave that as the animation, which I found to be a very great resolution, and we can hit OK for that. Okay, uh, after that one, if you wanted to export this, say for instance, if I went back into my composition and I wanted to import this into Final Cut Pro where it had no background, we could do that also. In other words, it would look like that. Okay, we could do that also. To do that, I would simply go back to my render queue and take a look at my lossless, and that's where I change my uh, channels to RGB and alpha, and I would also change my color to straight unmatted. And then if I was to hit OK on that, then it would no longer have a background. But in my case, um, 
I'll actually leave it without the background for now. And uh, if we wanted to stretch it out any uh, or shrink it on down, we could do that in here. For instance, mine is rather a large file, so for 2K. So uh, let's say I want to shrink it down. I don't know. Uh, I will just export it at this size, which is 960 by 720. And you can even see how much it shrinks it on down. Uh, you could also choose to crop an image if you desire. I have never cropped a single export that I've ever done, but if you want to, you can. And last but not least, uh, you got to make sure to check the audio output if you have audio on your uh, animation. In my case, I do not have audio on my animation, so I will not check that box. But also know that audio will not export unless you check this box. So by default, that will not be checked. So if you have audio, make sure to not forget to check that little box, okay? Uh, in my case, again, I said I had no audio, so I'm okay with all these settings, and I'm going to hit OK. And after that, I'm pretty much done. Once I've set up all my settings that I want to export this as, I can simply go right over here and hit render. Um, we do not encourage you guys to export this method, go and file export, because if I was to, let's say I was to go to, I don't know, QuickTime Movie, and as you can even see on there, uh, the pop-up even says, you have chosen to export using a QuickTime component. While necessary in some instances, this is not the preferred way to export most compositions. The render queue, composition add to render queue, is the primary way to render and export compositions. The render queue provides additional file formats, settings, templates, and batch rendering. So even the computer is even encouraging you to uh, export using the render queue or the make movie. If I was to hit OK on this, it gives you some of the settings of it like you might see from Final Cut Pro, and then you can change it in there. But like it even said, uh, it prefers the method of the render queue uh, because you can even do multiple sequences if you'd like. Like I had this other one right here that if I wanted to render this one out, I could hit Apple M and you know pretty much set these all up in, in a row, which I've done many, many occasions, and hit render to let it render all of them out. And in some instances, I even uh, have noticed whenever we use the file export method that sometimes it will take forever and have problems exporting. So I've noticed that I've just had less problems and less issues uh, using the render queue method. All right. But in this case, I'm just going to render that simple comp one. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit render. So there's my beautiful ding showing me that my composition is now fully exported, and I'm super happy about this. And once I've exported out of After Effects, I can now hide After Effects and see here I have my completed movie that is its own QuickTime file that I can now put into any program I'd like, actually. So there it is playing out. Um, even though it is an animation compression, uh, it is not playing choppy because it is so short. So just know if it's anything longer than usually about three to four seconds, it might play a little choppy, but this one's pretty short. So anyways, let's bring this into Final Cut Pro. And you will see that as soon as I bring this on in here, I will move these uh, two guys right on in there, boop, just like that, um, that I exported one with an alpha... Uh, alpha mat or the RGB plus alpha which is the Curtis logo and you'll see what this actually looks like in Final Cut Pro if I was to drag and drop it on top of there you'll see that there I see my logo with its animation and um, you know it's it's got a transparent background where I exported uh, this other one without a transparent background or just a regular RGB channel and you'll see this one's actually just straight black and white okay with a background on it. So that is the difference between the two. And these might play a little choppy in Final Cut Pro also, but just remember to render them on out. And let's go to, uh, sorry, render all or just uh, Apple R to render them or Option R to render them on out. And then they should play perfectly fine. But these are pretty much good to go. Going back to one little side thing that I mentioned earlier is that if you have a sequence in After Effects that continuously crashes, no matter how many times you export it, it continuously crashes, uh, you can do this option of bringing in the render queue and uh, changing your lossless. So instead of the format being a QuickTime movie, you can change it to a JPEG sequence. And the perk of doing this is if it crashes once again, um, it's actually exporting it frame by frame individually. So you'll have something that looks like this. It'll just be a sequence with a whole bunch of single picked files. So that way if it crashes, let's say it crashes on, I don't know, frame 18, you can then go to frame 19 and begin your render again. And then just keep doing that depending on how many times it crashes. And then you won't lose the rest of that information uh, if it crashes. You won't lose all the rest of those files. You can just pick right up on frame 19 and begin again. So if that was to happen in this case, I would just simply go over here, you know, maybe change this by holding uh, Apple or Command and change that. And I can simply click on that and go to frame 19 
change my B to start there, and then just send that right back over to the render queue, and then render that one on out. And then that will start right on 18 again, you know, and then don't forget to change this to a pick sequence again. And then that'll be all hunky-dory. Now, once this all happens, what you're going to end up with is exactly what I have right here, is a whole bunch of picture files. And now, obviously, you can either bring this into Final Cut Pro and uh, bring them all in the still images, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Majority of the time, what I do is I just simply go back over to After Effects here. I go to Import them on in. So I'll hit Apple I to import. I'm going to go over to my drive where I have that export and find it. And there it is. And when I open this, you'll see if I click on this file, it'll ask me if I want to bring it in as a pick sequence. If I hit, if I check this and say yes, uh, I can hit open, and you'll see that it'll actually bring it in as one big file. So if I drag this down on the Make Composition icon, now it's all just one big sequence that will play through, and I can export this again, and shouldn't have any problems at all with this crashing or anything like that. So that is my workaround if After Effects continuously crashes on you in one, um, you know, in one instance of a sequence that you have is too complex. So uh, that's all I pretty much had to show you about the exporting process from After Effects. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, now you know how to export.